The jobs that can't find workers. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's look at this article from news.com.au. The jobs in need of workers are in rural, regional and outer suburban areas. So this will be interesting, looking at the jobs that just can't find workers. Now we've had viewers share their experiences in trying to find employees for certain jobs. There's one that springs to mind over in WA, trying to get cleaners for their hotel and everyone wants cashies. Hmm. Yeah, must be frustrating. Had my sister-in-law applied for a job, a nannying job. And the woman was looking, well, for a nanny. And had quite a lot of difficulty actually finding someone getting it for it. She, I think, advertised on, on some nannying website. 30 people, you know, contacted 30 people. Only one replied. Do people not want to work, guys? You know, because working is hard. You know, we don't want to work. Work takes effort. You know, I've, I've got my other qualifications. Why would I do something other than what I've done? Yeah, well, you know, life's a bit like that sometimes. I think some people are going to be humbled in this recession, honestly. Maybe they'll realize that the lies they've been told by the universities and the media, well, we're not all that special, guys. And those, uh, those degrees you've got may not be worth worth anything. So... Korea's panel of expert recruiters answer a reader's question is each week. Have you got a question? Okay. So, um, I've heard employers in regional and outer suburb areas of Adelaide struggle to get applicants for roles. Is this so? And if so, in what industries? Um, do you think these questions are real? Oh, well, we'll need the Adelaidean viewers can let us know. So this is Lisa Morris from Hayes. Yes, it's true that skill shortages are more pronounced in regional areas where fewer skilled professionals choose to live. However, rather than being specific to one particular industry, this trend is evident across industries from mining to finance and healthcare. The good news is that we have seen a shift in recent months with more employers embracing remote working and therefore willing to consider candidates who live outside their region. However, in general, when a regional employer looks for a highly skilled professional, a solid candidate attraction campaign is required. For example, we've recently run three campaigns to find and engage a media professional, an IT expert, and an administration manager with the necessary skills and experience who were willing to relocate. I've seen this in my uh, architecture profession here in Queensland. And you know what? I'll bring up I'll bring up Google Earth to for those of you that aren't familiar, you know, because we do have some foreign viewers. Australia's bloody big, guys. It is a very big country very big and we've only got a few cities okay we've got a few cities and a lot of nothing in between to be brutally honest so okay i'll turn off these coal mines so this is we'll go places roads and borders so here we have queensland everyone so we've got southeast queensland here brisbane this is what people who live in southeast queensland including myself we think we're all of queensland you know we're all that matters Okay, and everyone in the country can agree to that. But you've got all of this part of the state as well. And you particularly you've got all these cities going up north. Here. You know, Bundy here, good Bundy. Rum, Harvey Bay, where, you know, the newly wed or the nearly dead. You've got uh, Maryborough, the further up you go. You know, Gladstone and all these places up here, Rocky. Now, when I was a student of studying architecture at university, they were doing a campaign to try and get students to do their year out in the regions up north because you have a better quality of life um you know the money's the same or maybe a little bit better but also your experience was much better because there'd be no one else to do the jobs you may sit here in brisbane just doing markups where someone draws on a piece of paper and you copy it or in Mackay, you may be running an entire project going outside learning all this stuff because there's no one else to do it you know and i wonder i wonder if they're still doing that now to try and get people to work in the regions i know people who've gone regional and then have come back and another thing is also the housing you know for what you get a tiny little box here in brisbane you can get you know a place with breathing room up at maryborough or gimpy or even you know bundy you know so let's jump back here and who do we have another one from justin hinora from hender consulting 
regional and outer suburban areas tend to have a lower density of population as compared with metropolitan Adelaide, which is funny because, you know, Adelaide, Adelaide's pretty small. <laughs> as a result, these areas don't tend to have the same choice of candidates. Different areas can often have region-specific industries, and some of these can be seasonally driven. It's also not uncommon for someone considering to have sought after skills and experience in a metropolitan area to struggle to secure employment in their profession in a regional setting due to limited opportunities and have to adapt or change industries in order to secure employment. That's another thing to consider, guys. You know, it means you're not that special. What's Andrew Sullivan says from Sullivan Consulting. Areas with low population always tend to have lower application rates simply because of the number of candidates in the areas. Factors such as fewer services in regional areas, higher commuting times from the, from the suburbs. We've seen that in, well, the state of Australia, the declining, the declining Australian way of life. We saw that this morning, isn't it? Commute times are just going nuts. Or need to relocate can be barriers for city dwellers to apply for non-urban roles. However, regional areas are growing, especially in healthcare, childcare, education, and management, and many positions need to be filled. So if you're looking for a change of lifestyle, more space, and a more tight-knit community, consider taking a look. Well, it can backfire as well. Some of these tight-knit country communities may not like outsiders. Alexandria Rossa from Stillwell Management Consultants. While statistics suggest that one in five businesses across Australia are reporting skill shortages, regional and outer suburban areas are particularly challenging due to a range of factors. Tourism, accommodation and hospitality providers and employers in agriculture and verticulture, for example, have been severely impacted by the pandemic's effects on reducing international and domestic travelers who traditionally took up seasonal jobs. Aged care, healthcare, education, engineering and IT are other industries in which employers have not been able to meet their demands, while the construction industry also reports difficulty finding and keeping skilled tradespersons. So there we have it. I mean, some insight into the challenges with going remote. I guess, you know, nothing too surprising. Nothing seems to have changed, particularly from what I saw from my university days. Same thing in architecture. Everyone wanted to stay in Brisbane because you could work in the bigger firms, probably the more glamorous sounding firms but the experience you get going regional well that was like hen's teeth particularly with contract administration now it's hard to get that these days anyway guys what do you think have you tried to find work regional have you looked moved regional or are you just struggling to get workers as always thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and enjoy the content i create here there are a few ways you can support us you can join us on youtube or patreon you can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use a gold pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.